The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer to peer. Buddy, good morning. So, how are you gentlemen doing this morning? Good, 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 good. Uh, it's like unseasonably warm here, which is awesome. Beautiful day. Beautiful like, global summer. warming for the win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a fan of global warming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you live in the north, like, why wouldn't you want to warm up a little bit? Right? It's just going to lead to better things. <laughs> I mean, it, there used to be glaciers where you live, so, you know, this is an improvement. <laughs> I um, I watched some video where this guy was talking about methane, and he was, he was like, showing that um, methane, like, spikes in methane for, like, historically have preceded uh, a very rapid, like, decades-long warming event where you get, like, two or three more degrees just, like, very quickly, and then it kind of tapers off. Um, I, I mean, I don't know what to make of all that. Climate science is incredibly complex, which is kind of why it's like a joke to me to hear them. Well, you know, we don't want to get banned from uh, YouTube, so <laughs> maybe I'll reserve my opinion there on that one. But it's it's a very complex science, so it's hard to attribute changes to any one particular thing. I'll just say that. I know. We, we can't even figure out what the price of Monero is going to be tomorrow, let alone what the weather is going to be in, you know, 10 years from now, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> it's uh it's pretty hard to predict. Um, but yeah. We we, we don't need Price to go down. Monero. Unless you want to. You, you want to say whatever you want on this show, obviously. <laughs> well, I mean, I just don't, you know, I don't want to get caught up in the um I don't know, whatever bots they use to to scan for the keywords and the the wrong thing. Yeah, I told you we got we got flagged, right? Or yeah, you guys are already in the bad graces because of the uh the interview with Health Ranger, right? Yeah, that was I literally think just because we had Health Ranger in the name, like it's odd, it's an auto flag. <laughs> like that's that's crazy that he is so banned that if you just bring the guy on or just like mention him in the title. You gotta misspell his name on purpose. That's insane. H E at L T H <laughs> Ranger with an at and a three for the E. Yeah. And it went that way. Obviously, has the opposite effect. Everybody wants to hear what he has to say, right? Like, it's like, well, what is this guy? If he's, if he, if people are so terrified of him, if the government's so terrified of what he has to say, it must be uh, something interesting and worth listening to. Um, so I have, um, go ahead. I have buddy. kind of like one news event that I think is important to uh, to to bring out. So Acapulco got hit with a Category Five hurricane, 165 yeah. mile an hour winds. Um, Crazy. Imagine waking up, imagine you live on the coast, like in Florida or something, you wake up one morning and probably you don't check the weather most days. I mean, I know I don't, um, but let's suppose you did. You wake up one morning, you check the weather, there's a tropical storm, not even predicted to make landfall. It's going to turn west by lunchtime. Um, it's become a hurricane and you're like, yeah, but they still say it's probably not going to hit. By dinner time, if you're still paying attention even, this thing is now almost a category five hurricane and oh no, by the way, it's going to make landfall. At 9 That's p.m., insane. you start realizing that you're fucked and that it's uh, that's 165 mile an hour winds and that it's headed straight for you. So you've got a couple hours to prepare, but a lot of people didn't even know that was about to happen. And it destroyed that town. It completely annihilated Acapulco. Like the buildings are all stripped down to their metal girders, basically. Like everything's yeah. just gone. Um, so, you know, if you if you can donate, if you're in Mexico, look for a centro de acopio. Uh, it's like a, a place where you can give food and clothes and tennis shoes, stuff like that. Um, or if you want to donate money, you know, ob obviously be careful, you know, who you're donating to. There could, you know, there's going to, there's going to be scams out there that happens every time. Um, but there's probably trustworthy people, probably the TDV guys, um, the, the Anarchapulco guys, probably people associated with that are, are um, going to be doing good things. Um, just make sure like, so for example, Danny Sesum, um, he's, he's done a lot of charity work already. Um, so anything that he's involved with, you can probably have a little bit of extra trust that they're going to spend the money wisely. Um, and I've already seen on Twitter, like there's, um, you can donate Bitcoin, you can donate Monero, um, and then you can donate, you know, just like regular cash as well. So those guys need a lot of help. It's like media silence. I have my crazy conspiracy theories about what happened with that hurricane or it's speculation. It's totally speculation, but that kind of shit shouldn't happen that like, it was way they shouldn't quick. get a forecast that wrong. So I, I don't know who knows what happened there, but there's like they're not really reporting on it right now. So those guys need help. Acapulco needs help if you're if you're able to. If someone has a link to the Thanks. that fundraiser, can you put it in the description? Or uh, not the script? <laughs> That's for me to do. Can you put it in the comments? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's get that out there. That's crazy. If anybody has, um, you know, that's that's down there by any chance, because I, I know we have like a narco poker people that tune into this. Um, please, uh, please try to jump on later uh, when we have viewers on stage. Let us know what's going on. Uh, beautiful to see that they did raise some significant money though already with crypto Monero in particular. Yeah. I, was, I was surprised by that. Yeah, Who did like, you say was doing that fundraiser? I guess the um, biggest so. One? Th- the Anarchapoco Associated People. I mean, I don't know. There, I've heard like a few different fundraisers. Um, I haven't really looked into it. I mostly so far have just focused on um, sending um, supplies. Uh, you know, just went to a center, got everything I could, bought a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, like things like baby formula, diapers, like that kind of stuff is really important for them right now. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I do. I haven't donated any money yet, but um, as soon as I kind of look at which fundraisers are out there, um, you know, I'll probably choose one and, and go with that. Probably whatever Danny, Se- Danny Sesame is associated with, I'll probably do that because he's already been doing charity work um, mm-hmm. with an orphanage down in uh, in Acapulco. So, um, yeah, Danny, I don't if, you're, I don't have a link. if you're listening, please join because he's he's been on the show a couple of times. I know he tunes in. Uh, I forget what his Twitter thing is. Um, yeah, we could hit him up. Maybe he can jump on and give us let us know what's going on. But yeah, it's so bizarre, right? Yeah, they. I haven't been following the news much, but yeah, I didn't see it at all in in the news. Um, I saw it on Twitter after after the event happened. Very bizarre. Yeah, even even here, I like we're like, oh, a hurricane hit Acapulco. Like, oh, okay, you know that happens sometimes. So for right. like the first day, I just didn't think about it, and then. Um, we started getting like some reports and then it was like, Oh, that's a category five. I'm like, Oh, interesting. That's pretty powerful. And then suddenly it starts becoming clear to us about 24 hours later that, um, you know, that no one expected it to hit. And that this thing in less than 12 hours in, in the course of a day went, went from a tropical storm to, to a category five. That's the most powerful hurricane ever to make landfall uh, on Mexican shores. And it's probably like in the top power of hurricanes in, Say again. You think they'd be getting all over that, reporting it like crazy? Yeah, I mean, like I'm I opening mean, up. The New York, like, I'm looking at the New York Times right now. Um, I don't see it. It's not even in the New York Times. I think they could use this so much for their uh, their global warming narrative that suddenly this tropical storm turned into a hurricane. It's ah, it's because of global warming. Mm. Yet they're not. That's a very good point. That's like a very salient point, actually, because. These guys never miss an opportunity to take oh, some no, some weather disaster and blame it on global warming. Like so Canadian fire like started because global warming. Like, going on. Me? All right, I'm I'm seeing it here on New York Times, but yeah, it's you got you got to scroll down. It's 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 not a it's not a top story yet in the eyes of the New York Times. Yeah, I mean it, um, it's out there in the news, but you would expect like the most powerful hurricane to ever make landfall. Because usually, you know, when a hurricane starts to move in, like it starts to make landfall, it weakens a little bit. The 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 wind. Yeah. Um, like the wind strength that was out in the ocean is not what actually hits, you know, once it finds, once the eye wall finally hits land. In this case, this was like the most powerful winds that have ever hit land. It was very concentrated and it hit like directly on Acapulco, like a, a direct right. And usually you're talking about it a week building up to it. Like this could be the biggest one ever to hit. And then, yeah, and after people it, it leave, inevitably yeah. drops down to a category two and whatever. This ended up being the biggest one that ever hit and nothing was discussed beforehand crazy it's like the yeah. worst yeah it's like it's like the worst way it could have happened it's like nobody was told to leave at all because it's like oh it's a tropical storm and then in the tiniest span of time where no one has any possibility of leaving it just turns into the worst hurricane ever to hit land it's like just no. it's something all right yeah. well Dan, if, if you're out there you're listening uh please like try to jump on later uh if you can around well right, man. Let's, i guess pivot a little bit here into price um we got the monero chart in front of us you can see we're, we're sort of at these upper standard deviation bands um so in terms of the way <laughs> wow Sorry. in terms of the way the uh the price has been playing out for um really for for most of this year um you kind of have to start suspecting is this pump over did we get everything that's going to happen um, or do we have another? Do we have another wave that potentially could be coming? Um, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the Bitcoin price, um, because unfortunately, as you can see, if we look at Bitcoin versus Monero, we haven't exactly kept up, right? And we kind of talked about this um, in this in this area. We said, hey, you know, I've got the hopeful delusion we can break to the upside and start moving up, but 
if we think that Bitcoin is going to turn positive here, um, that might not spell good things for the ratio. So, um, wow. yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, we're not doing great. Zero zero four seven is is not like the best um, ratio numbers that we've ever seen. Um, at the same time, you know, with the ETF and some of the news out there, it, and and with the with the GPTC premium closing, um, although that's kind of that that took a little bit of a hiatus uh, for the past week. So you'll notice that uh, GBTC premium has been closing and then it actually um, went from negative 12 to negative 18. So this right here is not like the fact that this premium opened during the Bitcoin pump. That's that's a little bit um, uh, that, that, that's a little bit shady to me. Like that's it, it's just a short amount of time. Right. We're just talking from from the past seven or eight days. Um, but if this thing keeps going further. Right. If this trend continues while price kind of like flattens up out here. That would kind of be an indication that this run might um, might not have much legs, might kind of be over. Um, you'll notice that I've kind of extended this line right here because this line is now relevant once again. But one thing I want to point out about the pattern of how things have um, have played out here, it's like you get this big, massive pump, and then it kind of flattens out, and it tries to make a little higher high, and then you know dump, and then you get a big, massive pump, and then it kind of tries to make you know makes a little higher high, and then it kind of bleeds out for months. And then a big pump, same thing, bleeds out. Weights, actually, this one had a little bit more momentum in the run up to it. Um, and actually gave kind of gave you an opportunity if you really wanted to to, to try and take along here. Um, I personally wasn't biting mostly because I said, hey, I've got my insurance place, right? I had, um, I think it was Link, um, Tau, which is like this kind of, it's a brand new coin. Uh, but I've got Link, I've got Tau. Um, I accidentally have some of the Mr. Richard Hart coin. Uh, I thought I sold and dumped that shit like. <laughs> like two months ago or something. Uh, and then uh, I just hadn't looked at that wallet in a long time. And I opened it up. And I was like, wait, I sold this position. Maybe I had a reorg or something. I don't know. Because I was like, I got the confirmation in my wallet. Um, and then and then I was like, wait, you know, so I thought, okay, good, it's done. And then I closed everything down and I didn't check it again. Um, so maybe there was like a one block reorg or two block reorg or something like that. Uh, anyway, so I looked and it's still there in my wallet. I'm like, God damn it. So uh, anyways, uh, that that position came back after like, dying for, for a long time uh by the way don't buy that coin it's probably going to die a lot um that coin is like a completely degenerate shitcoin speculative play when you think things might go up um broadly so it, but yeah don't don't be messing with that unless you're like okay with losing all of that money and that's true of shitcoins in general okay anyway so um yeah i i said hey i don't really you know i'm not really interested in, in playing with fire here on this one i don't know if it's going to go up or down i'm not confident i'm going to make sure i lock in my gains i've got my insurance plays and those have actually worked out pretty well um link actually did quite a lot of good movement for me we'll look at that here in a second Anyways, um, so uh, yeah, Bitcoin got a big, nice smash up. But again, it's the same pattern that we've seen for, for all year long, like since January. So right now, my concern is like, okay, we got this big smash up. We're, um, you know, we're sitting at the this, uh, you know, resistance area. And, you know, we're going to kind of do this again and then come back to the downside, right? I, I don't know. Like, we, we really got to look at this. We really got to like, mm, you know, cross check. Um, I mean, the safe thing, like, okay. Long term, long time frames, uh, Bitcoin cryptocurrency is going to continue to move up. They're digital bearer assets with um, with minimum viability. They're becoming more accepted in the world. They're becoming legally more accepted. You know, it's it's just a matter of time before this thing moves to the upside. So the safe thing here is that, you know, hopefully you, you got your, you know, if you're a hodler, if you're a DCA or like this was your opportunity to be DCAing, that was where you wanted to do that, especially especially down here. Right. Um, we, we talked about that in real time, said, hey. It, this is like this is prime area for you to get your to get your hodl. Um, the other thing too is that um, you know if we ever make it back down to the um, uh, to the uh, the regression analysis, which I don't have pulled up here, I'm not going to waste time trying to find that right now. Um, I can't remember if I if I have it on a chart or a separate indicator. Anyways, um, the regression analysis currently would be like nineteen thousand. Who knows if we ever make it back that far? Typically, the way the pattern is played out on, on cryptocurrency and specifically Bitcoin is that um, you've got kind of like you've got the recovery. It kind of falls. You've got, um, you know, basically into 2024 or what was uh, 2020 last time or 2016. You get kind of like one more big washout, um, you know, to the downside and then, and then the bull market commences. Um, you know, do you really want to bet on this washout is actually going to happen? I don't know. Maybe you don't want to bet on that. Um, maybe. Maybe you just say, "Hey, I'm not, I'm not a trader. I'm. This is, this is too much to worry about." So, anyways, um, at the moment, um, yeah, broke out of this big triangle right here. Um, 
and currently Bitcoin is just kind of like sitting at this resistance. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out. Uh, I personally wouldn't be taking any big longs right here. I don't think that's a smart move. Your opportunity to take a big long would have been um, as this triangle was breaking right here. Right. So as we as we kind of talked about on Saturday last week that uh, this thing was breaking. And once this thing kind of confirmed, um, like this would have been your opportunity, right? To say, OK, this 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 triangle is basically confirmed a couple days outside of, um, you know, to the break on the upside. Uh, and then it moved directly up. So I wouldn't personally be taking any longs right here. Um, so I if, it, had, if, it retra if it retrace retraces, where do you where do you think uh, it bottoms out again? Then, Like where's the uh, I mean, on, on a short time frame, you would look at. um you would see uh, this area right here, um, probably, you know, this dotted line somewhere around there, maybe mm -hmm. the top right here, right? So on a retrace, you would be looking at this area, like in the near term. Um, on a more longer time frame, uh, you've got this sort of area right here that was, you know, kind of resistance, then support. That was support right there. You would kind of be looking to come back down to this area. Um, and then like on very long time frames, obviously the, um, the regression analysis, let me see if I can pull it up anyways. Maybe it'll pop up here for us. I think I've got a like another chart that actually just keeps this. Maybe I have a layout. No. I need to just make a layout that shows the regression. Okay, you can see the lines here on the bottom. This is the current regression analysis uh, for the bottom. This is like, again, this is your sell everything, sell the farm, sell your car, uh, loan your kidneys, um, you know, use them as collateral and then, uh, and you know, buy. So this line um, would kind of move up something like that. That can't be right. No, no. Okay, this is not right because we're not looking at the correct chart. Let's go to BLX. That's that's the right way to look at this. There we go. Okay, because BLX has the full history. Um, and we'll go to the weekly so that this thing looks a little bit better. So on the very, very long term, like the retrace, really the retrace that I would hope would happen, and I do expect should happen at some point, is to actually fully touch this red line down here. This line is like, now, who knows? That could be like, for all we know, that could be, like almost at the end of next year, right? We might only touch this line and that could be at 32,000 because this thing actually rises pretty fast. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Those are kind of your short um, and your and your long-term spots to look for um, for a retracement on, on Bitcoin. Um, maybe we should, uh, let's take a look at the dominance real quick, Bitcoin dominance. Um, yeah, so uh, as we talked about last week that, you know, things were kind of looking like they might want to break out um, with in terms of wave magic. Right. You've got the uh, the standard. Sorry, the the moving average cluster. This is the highest set of moving averages that exist for the chart. Um, oh, by the way, obviously, turn your charts on to 1080p. Sometimes YouTube will default to like a 420 or 720p or something like that. Um, so because um, you can't really see these lines so well when you're on low resolution, even 1080p isn't quite enough. But, you know, we we, we, we do you, we use what we got. So anyways, um, yeah, when you touch this like this, uh, the moving average cluster here kind of pulled back. And then again, it touched it here last week. Um, yeah, I mean, that's like that's how you break resistance, right? That's how you like punch through a resistance. You touch it, um, you know, you have a little bit of a pullback consolidation. You kind of bump up against it again. Um, so anyways, this thing did break out. Bitcoin dominance did break out. Um, I don't have any opinions really on this chart, whether Bitcoin um, continues to break out or not. If the market is feeling bullish and has an appetite, then you can kind of expect that, um, you know, altcoins might be able to perform a little bit better. Um, here's the ETH BTC chart that um, I had this. The reason last week that this wasn't uh, showing up on the line, like the 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 uh, support line was because I had it on um, on regular scale. I don't know why. Um, but anyways, you can see like there's a very long term. Let's go to the weekly. There's a very long term support line. Um, really since like 2017. So right now, um, ETH BTC is kind of touching that line. It broke down from this triangle thing here, um, which kind of surprised me. I really expected this to just kind of trend down inside the triangle and eventually break up. Um, but, you know, uh, this line right here, that's a pretty important line. Like if ETH Ethereum BTC breaks down that line um, in a convincing way, like that, that could be, that could spell problems for the BTC price. And it might force me to take a revaluation of, um, of my sort of longer term view of Ethereum. Um, but for now, like that's, that's basically just support. Uh, let's see, let's go to some of the macro stuff. Dollar index hasn't done much. Um, you'll notice that, um, so yeah, it broke down the, um, this kind of like the, the, the midterm um, support line, sort of trend line on the way up. Um, but again, you can also see as we've marked uh, this, um, this line right here, the dotted line, um, that's that's being significant, right? That's a horizontal area of significance. It's kind of offering support. 
um, for the for the dollar index. So for the meantime, dollar index looks like it's um, it's kind of taking a chill pill. Probably not going to go do too much um, for like it, it. It could make its way, you know, up here. I kind of like uh, from a chart perspective, you would expect to kind of get up to this area right here. And again, dollar index lightly being mostly being anti-correlated with risk assets, uh, risk assets in general, um, especially being anti-correlated with gold. Um, you can also see you've got the, the long-term standard deviation bands. So I would expect dollar index to at least try to top out here um, in, in this area. Maybe it happens next month. Maybe it happens next year. Um, that would also, again, be still correlated with like kind of um, problems in the stock market. So uh, going over to stocks, pivoting here really quick. Um, we're basically seeing this head and shoulder pattern that we've been talking about for um, really months now. Um, looks like it's it's basically about to finish playing out. So again, shoulder, head, shoulder, and then um, and then this white line, right? So we're basically taking the measurement from the top to the neckline and then dropping that down here at the breakdown. So effectively, um, price has basically made that target. Like if effectively, okay, it hasn't like perfectly touched that target, but it's that as far as the S and P five hundred is concerned, like that downside target has has been met. Um, so the head and shoulders is technically finished playing out here on the S&P, but that doesn't mean that it that it's done going down. Um, things can overperform to the downside. And right now it feels like very much a risk off situation. People have moved into gold, um, right? Gold has become a big player. It's still um, it's still like performing pretty well, um, did pretty well this past week. Um, this line right here, you know, obviously that's that's resistance. Right now, gold looks like it's trying to, uh, you know, close the week just barely above it. If it closes another week above this line, expect to probably pump to the top side, at which point I wouldn't expect gold to just immediately break out um, because, uh, I mean, for a number of reasons, right? The, the cabal typically doesn't want gold to perform. Um, if we've got some kind of recession and a really larger, like, um, oh, what is this guy? So there's this guy named Francis Hunt. Um, I watch his videos from time to time. Um, I've learned quite a few things from him, actually, from a charting perspective. Uh, so he says that um, he calls it a demand-destroying event, like the uh, the events of 2020 were a demand-destroying event. So um, a demand-destroying event sees gold um, get sold off with everything else. Um, but apart from like demand destroying events, gold, um, can often act as, uh, sort of a, a hedge, um, or a risk off play in terms of like, okay, well, I'm afraid of the stock market. Um, you know, I'm going to go into either bonds or maybe gold or something like that. So anyways, um, you know, the cabal doesn't like to like gold to pump if there is a demand destroying event coming up, or if there is like some just broad, like recession event happening, or that could be in progress, maybe, um, maybe sometime next year. Um, you know, gold is going to get sold off with it. So there's just, there's reasons to think that gold would cap out here once again. Um, but, uh, for now it looks, um, it looks like there's a good chance for, for it to make, um, basically finish complete, um, going to the top side here and then hit this resistance. Um, you know, you can kind of see we're, we're starting to get sh a little bit short in the, um, or long in the tooth here on this chart pattern. This thing should eventually break out, but you know, we're on the monthly right now. So this right here is 2025. Here's 2024. So probably sometime next year, this chart is going to break to the upside. And that break of gold to the upside is probably going to signal um, that another risk on move is, is imminent because um, that's typically how these things have played out for the past two decades. Gold pumps first um, and then everything else pumps afterwards and then gold languishes. So um, that's your play. Like that's what you need to be like. I've got a big chunk of my net worth just sitting in gold. Um, and if, and when that breaks out, there will come a time for me to pivot that back into risk assets, which will probably be crypto, um, of various sorts. Uh, let's see, let's take a look at the, um, nothing happened with the, um, with the, uh, yields. So basically every, like we talked about last week, things came to the upside and, uh, um, and, and this, this yield curve inversion has closed somewhat, uh, for the past week, not too much happened, um, uh, basically just kind of flat. So nothing exciting going on there. Um, let's take a look at the NASDAQ also as well, because the NASDAQ is now getting back down to, um, the bottom side of this channel. So you'll notice these dotted lines here. So the head and shoulder pattern on the NASDAQ, just like we did for the S and P, um, it still hasn't really quite made its, um, you know, made its target. You still got to really, if this thing made its target, it'll break down from this channel. Um, at a bare minimum, you can see this horizontal area of significance. That was the, um, we see that was the 2022 rebound pump in August. That was the top of that pump. So that's really like, that's a very prominent place to expect the NASDAQ to at least, um, you know, try to make that target. Um, the only thing that would, I would um, like question my thesis on that is that, um, you know, they, the 
things are controlled, like the financial financials tend to be controlled and managed. Um, and keeping things inside of this channel would be kind of like a nice um, sort of control mechanism, right? That'd be like a nice way to say, hey, don't worry. You're inside the chart channel. Don't sell your assets. Everybody stay inside of safe, warm, wonderful stocks. Um, you know, that's kind of that's kind of like what, what the cabal tends to like to do. Um, although, except for occasionally, you know, when things just like crash. So anyways, um, you know, to, to it, what I'm saying is that to meet this, um, this support line right here, to meet this kind of like, to me, that's a natural area for price to be attracted back down to, especially because it got above that channel. Um, you know, you kind of think, well, maybe it needs to get below this channel. Anyway, so um, yeah, things will have to continue breaking down to meet that. Uh, right now, mm, with the dollar index flattening off, um, you know that maybe maybe there could be some hope. Um, but contrary to what I was just saying, uh, actually that's the S and P. Let's go to the Nasdaq again. So, all right, this is wave magic on the Nasdaq. The only difference is that this is the futures market for the Nasdaq, whereas we were looking at the actual Nasdaq. So this is CME um, extended trading hours and such. So um, again, with the wave magic. It, this kind of action is very classic. As we talked about, like you don't expect to just like come from the bottom of the standard deviation bands, pump to the top to the upper standard deviation bands, and then continue pumping. Like that's that's really typically not how things go. You typically need to like after you start, like especially right here, after you break down out of these bands, like you really expect to have to come down to to some kind of area that that like should be support. So in a bullish scenario, you would you would meet support somewhere inside of this um inside of these moving average clusters and then, you know, come back to the upside. So if that happens, like if we, and that's probably like, honestly, it, unless we're going to see some kind of big demand destroying event. And again, the bonds bonds should hopefully give us the advance warning that that's actually in progress. If that's not going to happen, then what you would really kind of expect is, is to come back down here, meet these standard deviation clusters. And then um, at some point next year, um, optimistically start getting back into that upper standard deviation cluster of bands um, back up to the local highs, you know, kind of like double top and then, and then start pressing on towards higher highs. Um, that could be a very, like that very well could be the scenario that, that plays out here. Um, with all the inflation, you know, and everyone having like a hard time in some ways, it kind of makes sense for, um, you know, for the fed, for the government, whatever, to, to keep some of those stock market gains on the table so that people, people don't feel like they're getting too poor, you know, so they feel like, okay, you know, Stock market's still going up. My net worth is still, you know, doing okay. My retirement is still okay. Even though inflation is bad, like my retirement is also growing. Um, you know, who, who knows, like, who knows how badly they want to destroy the economy at any given point? Nobody really knows except for them. Um, uh, I think, I don't think we have too much else to talk about. Let's take a look at um, some of the Z-scores really quick, just so you can kind of get a relative view of how the assets are performing. Um, again, Z-scores... They basically center everything at zero, and then you look at how many standard deviations away from the moving average is price right now. And when I say the moving average, right, you could you could choose a bunch of different moving averages. Right now, we got a 365 day look back. So basically, for the volatility for for the standard deviations of the past 365 days, we're looking at how price is performing relative to that time frame. Um, and we could change that, right? We could look at shorter time frames. We could look at longer time frames, etc. So, anyways, you can see crypto's been performing quite well. Um, stocks have been dipping gold, obviously pumping up bonds have been just in the shitter, um, because yields keep pumping. Um, I'm not, I'm not convinced necessarily that yields are going to, are going to keep pumping on bonds, but I haven't really, really checked it out. Um, global liquidity situation. Um, let's see us dollar liquidity in green, uh, and then global liquidity in white. So global liquidity kind of still continuing to contract dollar liquidity continues to pump. Um, although we had a new number here on the M2 money supply. So new numbers came out. These things are like way far delayed. Like, let's see, this is for September 1st, right? This is dated September 1st. I think, um, you know, I, I, I'm never quite sure. Is this the, the time frame of August or is this the time frame of September? I think this is the time frame of August. So this right here being 901 on the bottom, you can see September 1st. I think this was the M2 money supply for August. You can see that it dropped a little bit. I guess that would be about 100 billion. Looks like, uh, yeah, that looks like eh, a little less than 100 billion, maybe like 800 million. So it dropped off not much, but um, you know that that's a slight contraction. Um, all right, I think that's I think that's about it. Um, yeah, the uh, the divergences on Monero's price have started to um, they, they've they've been on the the top side. In this case, um, it looks like. Monero diverging up has been correlated with Monero's price moving up. Um, but I've, I've seen this be anti-correlated more than anything. 
um, for a while now. Uh, I don't even know if we should, if we should even look at that. Like, I'm not sure how relevant that is anymore. Um, so unless there's anything specific you guys wanted to take a look at, um, oh, you know, maybe I'll show you um, one last thing here. In fact, two, two last things. I, I always say, I always say that's it. Um, that we're done. And then, and then I was thinking of like one more thing. Um, okay. So this is uh, again, Monero versus stock, sorry, not Monero, uh, uh, Bitcoin versus stocks continues to perform. Um, you can see we've got the wave magic turned on here. I wouldn't expect this to get anything past these big standard deviation bands, right? So these are very long-term bands right here, uh, these upper standard deviation. It would not be surprising to see this thing continue to pump for Bitcoin to continue to outperform stocks um, for another, uh, let's just say, let me go back to this, how much percent, uh, why are my charts being slow? Maybe for another 10%. Right, maybe another 10% of outperformance. We could probably go to the weekly. Um, that's actually going to take a moment to load. Oh, actually, that was pretty fast. Okay, yeah. So you can you can see it just maybe a little bit better here with the weekly, like in a broader time frame. Um, these again, the big upper standard deviation bands. Right now, this thing has established itself pretty well. It found support at these lower standard deviation bands. Uh, let's go to a three-day chart so that it's a little bit better. Um, I know this is messy. I apologize. Um, I'm my brain is used to looking at this, so it's not like anything too crazy for me. But um, what I want to pull out here is that you can see this lower standard deviation band cluster price found support down in there. And now it's moving up to a very solid area right here. I guess there's the possibility it could even move to the very top of those bands as well. But what I'm trying to say here is that overall, um, price has done a good job of establishing this range. So I wouldn't expect crypto to, to dump any harder relative to stocks. Again, always relative to stocks. I wouldn't expect it to dump any harder than this lower area right here. So let's suppose crypto takes a pullback and stocks make a comeback. Um, you know, that'll obviously reverse this chart. But effectively, this is a stable chart now. This thing should continue to be stable until the next bull market, in which case, at which point, um, Bitcoin should, again, significantly outperform stocks in the next big risk on moment. And then I promise double no take backsies. Uh, Dixie times gold tells us how well Dixie is performing, not divided by gold, but in terms of the fact that they're supposed to be anti-correlated, the reason that we're multiplying them together. Um, again, gold had this big fake out two weeks ago and, and then just came right back. So that is very much strength. Gold is strong right here. That doesn't mean that it has to like, you know, give you gains next week. But again, gold continues to show this, this, this big, broad, pervasive strength, um, like just a, across the way that it performs. So Gold times Dixie is going to break out at some point. Um, and again, that will likely correlate with um, with just in general overperformance um, on the gold price. So, um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. If there's any questions, you know, let me know. No, no, no. All good, man. All good. Fantastic as always. Thank Narrow, you. stable coin, making stable gains. <laughs> yep. Who needs Tether when you got Monero? Monero chugging along. Guys, you yeah, don't say it. You can just say that. Up uh like like and share the show especially if you're viewing it on twitter because now they sh they stream it live we're streaming it live on twitter the video um which is cool oh, nice. and now twitter puts it up on top where they used to put the spaces so maybe we could attract some noobs so if you're out there you're watching this on twitter just please uh retweet it get the word out thank you body stick around if you can um a lot more ahead if you can jump up later that'd be great yeah, I'll try. I think I've got to take off here pretty soon. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, thank you so much, man. Cool, guys. Thanks. All right. Thanks for always, buddy.